Good morning, George Hepworth, Grover Park Consulting. We're building the Lander Trail Foundation, an online searchable database for their extensive collection of books on the Lander Trail. In a previous video, I introduced the topic of formulas in Power Apps, which I used in the same way I would use global constants and public enums or public constants and in an access application, and I was very happy to learn that that capability was there. Recently, Shane Young of Power Apps 911 uploaded a video using formulas in ways which I had not considered, and it opened my eyes to the possibilities. So today, I'm going to show you some of the improvements I have made to my Lander Trail Foundation catalog app using formulas. As a result, the app loads much faster than it did before, and the code required to maintain the tables is far less cumbersome to implement and to manage. So with that, let's dive into the code. I'll take the application out of runtime mode, and we'll look at the two properties under the app itself that are relevant. First, under on start, you'll notice that there is no longer any code. I started out using on start the same way I would use an auto exec macro in an access database, except that I got carried away and started putting more and more things into it with the result that load times got slower and slower and slower. And it was a, a painful experience in some cases to load one of these apps with all of that code running in the OnStart. So I backed it all out. Instead, I incorporated formulas for almost all of the things that I had used the OnStart for. In a previous video, I described the app global variables and actually, these are both enums now, or the equivalent of enums in Access. This is a multi-part variable called app, which includes the title, the logo, the record limit, which probably is also something I can take out subject to further testing. I no, no longer rely on that. And the screen image, which covers the menu screen the app logo, the title, and the screen image. We have the user, pulling that from the user full name and email, again, and a new. This is where the lesson I learned from Shane turned on a light in my head, and I started to think, this is the way to speed up the start experience and also to make managing these record sources much easier. Specifically, starting here with media type used, media type all, I am pulling records from a view or from a table in SQL Server. The view is where I can set up my denormalized record source to use in combo boxes, and other places where I only want to do lookups but not do any updating against that data. And you've all used views or stored queries in Access for the same reason. In order to shape that data source the way I want, I apply show columns. I discovered that it's very helpful to use show columns when pulling records from a view uh, in order to make sure that I got all of the columns that I actually wanted. Uh, there were times when I was getting incomplete data. So I use show columns to bring in, for example, media type used has a media type, media type ID, which is its primary key, and a field called sort order, which I use to sort the media in the sequence I want rather than alphabetically. Then I wrap that in the sort by columns so that sort order is applied to the result of this show columns action 
And now this formula, F media type used, includes all of the records from that little record source. I no longer have to make repeated calls, but I don't have to make those repeated calls to the server to rebuild that as I did with a collection. Media type all comes from the full table and it has the same fields or columns in the same sort order. The difference is with media types used, it's filtered to show only media types actually applied to one or more books in the library. So if there's a media type like a DVD, for example, that is never actually applied to an item in our library, it will not show up here. That's more important in other places, but that's the principle we're looking at. Because it's pre-sorted, I, all, all I have to do is refer to that formula in any place, like in a combo box or a drop down, where I want to display the options. And I'll show you that in more detail in a second. This first one, which I skipped over, let's go back and look at that. This is a way to determine whether or not there are any records in this temp table. I use that temp table in a process where I take a picture of a book's cover and then attach that book cover image to the record for that book. This F new images tells me if there are any unprocessed records in that table, then I'm going to show a count of one or more. Otherwise, I'm going to show a count of zero. And the coalesce says, if this is null, if there are no records returned by this part of the function, then just make it zero. And that tells me I have no new images to process. So that's two ways in which formulas can be leveraged beyond what I was simply using them for before as enums and, and global constants. Some others that I'm using now, categories used, which is parallel to uh, media types used, pulls from a, from a view, authors used, same concept, pulls from a view which filters only authors in the database who are actually assigned to a book. These should match pretty closely the actual total number of authors and the total number of categories and the total number of media types. But as I explained with the media types, there may be a case where I have an author that I've entered that I've deleted books later and left them as an orphaned author without a book assigned. This just cleans up that list a little bit. So I only look at those that actually have a book in the library that I want to see. Authors all. Again, this returns all of the authors, whether they have a book assigned to them or not. I use show columns to bring in a calculated field called creator. First name, last name, middle name, ID, which is again the primary key, and a creator sort field, which uh, is again another calculated field generated in this view so that I can sort uh, actually, what creator sort does is it concatenates last name, first name, so that when I sort lists, they sort in the alphabetical order, last name first, so A, Anderson, through Z, Zedekiah. Some others that are used in a similar fashion, publishers, publishers use, Publications, this is the big difference. Publications runs against a view called pub sort title. Pub sort title includes a calculated field called pub sort name. A very quick sidetrack while we explain that. Pub sort name looks at the name of that the title of each book in the publication title field and says, if the first word in that title is a, uh, or if the first word is the, a day in the life, the way the West was won, 
this calculated field takes that a or that the from the beginning, puts a comma at the end of that name, and then replaces the a at the end. So instead of saying uh, walk in the woods, it says walk in the woods, comma, a. That allows me to sort alphabetically by the first meaningful word. Mean, by meaningful, I mean something other than an a uh or a the. But because I have that view pre-sorted that way, I don't have to bother with any of that in Power Apps. It's done for me by that view, leveraging the power of SQL Server. And all I have to do is then say, I'm going to sort on that field wherever I display my titles. Some others that I'm using now, publications with authors. Uh, this, is, this allows me to create a record source for a sub-gallery, which associates authors with their books, authors, books with their categories, publishers with books, and so on. Another view, again, pulls from a, another view, returns only those records where I no longer have that volume in my library. This happened during the processing of the records initially. I started out with, I believe there were three books that were originally in the catalog, and for some reason that was never you know, explained to me, uh, the foundation donated those, li those three books to a different uh, entity. I think they went to the VFW or something like that. So I had to then think, well, that could happen frequently down the road. So I created a view that shows me those books which are previously in the catalog but no longer here. And so I have a short list. Right now I believe there are three books in it. And then we're back into the original uh, enums that I demonstrated before. So that's an extended look at how I created these new formulas to replace collections, which I had previously been using, and eliminated the need to build and maintain those collections in the startup and elsewhere. For example, under my refresh data, all I need to do is refresh each of those data sources. That automatically forces the formula relying on those data sources to update themselves. An aside, I understand that in most cases, once the underlying record set changes, the formula the next time it is called will also reflect those changes. And that does work most of the time. What I discovered is that when I'm using views rather than the raw tables, sometimes that refreshing of the underlying data source is not consistent or timely. And rather than uh, run the risk of it not being updated, I automatically refresh them. And I have a, a helper button to do that. And I can call that same code anywhere I am sure, not sure that I'm looking at the complete current up-to-date record source. Very quickly, hop into Manage Publications. You've seen this before. We're syncing authors and categories with books. Notice that went quite a bit quicker. I redesigned this entire screen based on some other insights. Oh, by the way, I probably should mention that I have deployed a second copy of this to a friend of mine who is using it to capture all the books in his library, which could be quite extensive. It could be anywhere up to five or 6,000 books. So I'm looking forward to further feedback from him as, as he gave me his beta testing results. I began incorporating that back into the Lander Trail Foundation as well. And as you can see, uh, categories and authors now are on the same side of the form, for example. Let's look quickly at the gallery. The gallery now uses that publications formula, which is the complete full record, so record set 
of records in the publications table. With the addition of the pub sort name, which I can now eliminate the need to sort here because it's pre-sorted by the formula here. And this searching and filtering code is the same. Word of warning, word of warning, word of warning. Right now I have 1,929 records. We're very close to the 2,000 record limit for delegation. Once the total goes over the 2,000 delegation limit, this publications will originally be limited to the first 2,000 records it finds. That is a potential limitation, a potential problem. I don't anticipate it being a showstopper because of the way this is filtered. We should never get more than a couple of hundred records out of that full list because we're filtering by category, by author, and by the title of the book. So with, with any one of those three filters in place, we should never get more than a couple of hundred matching books, even if we go up to four or 5,000. That's my hope. I'll let you know if that pans out. The two subqueries here, this one is for authors. I simplified this a great deal by creating the formula based on the view which lists books with their authors. It's pre-filtered to list, or excuse me, it's predefined on a view. I said that badly, let me try that again. It's a view which is predefined to bring back a list of books and one or more authors associated with that book. So I don't have to do that, any of that look up here. All I have to do is filter it by the current publication and that and that will display in this subgallery all of the authors for any given book. And the same is true with categories. Books with the categories based on a view that pre pre-sorts and pre-aligns books with one or more categories. And they show up here in this formula, which is based on that view. And then I only have to filter it for the current record. One more item that we want to talk about. If I add a new record under the previous system, I had to rebuild the collection of publications every time I added or deleted a book. That's because the collection was resident in memory in the Power Apps application and did not reflect the current state of the underlying table if that table had changed a new records, deleted records, or modified records. So my collection would be out of sync with the underlying data source. So every time I saved or deleted a, a book, I had to rebuild that collection. That required considerable amount of code and was quite cumbersome to maintain and, and implement. Now, it's very simple. I patch a new book into the Temple publication, the same as I did before. I assign the value to a, to an, to a context variable using the update context. I refresh the publication so that the link to the, the data in the publication table uh, is refreshed up to that current state after this is added. And then I refresh this view. I believe I can eliminate this refresh. I have to do some further testing to verify that I can all, I reliably omit that. This is an addition which I will explain in a later video. I'm using the publication ID from this newly created book to run a flow which executes a stored procedure in the database, in the SQL Azure database. And the same is true 
on a delete. I simply have to refresh the underlying data source, the table and the view, and no more rebuilding collections on the fly. Collections have the advantage of allowing me to include every single record up to the 4,000, 6,000 in the table in memory, so I know that I always have a complete record source. But this is much faster. Formulas work much, load much faster than the collections did. And I don't have the additional uh, code needed to keep those collections synced with the underlying data. So for those two reasons, I am happy as a clam with the discovery of the power of formulas in Power Apps. That'll wrap it up for today. I thank you very much for watching. Please, when you hit the like button, also slide over and hit the notifications button and the subscribe button. That way, when I upload a new video explaining that new feature I just showed you with the Power App, with the Power Automate flow, executing a stored procedure on the server, you'll know when that's available.